This lecture covers the GVC I can solve mathematical problems using numerical and algebraic expressions and equations. Specifically with the learning target, I can simplify expressions and equations using properties, like terms, and factoring. So this video is going to cover uh, practicing combining like terms and understanding why we can combine or not combine like terms, or unlike terms. There's a few vocabulary words you're going to have to know. The first is term. We're talking about terms, and we're going to talk about like terms, okay? So in an expression, well, maybe I should go here first. Let's talk about what an expression is. I'll give you an example of a numerical expression, 2 plus 3. This is a numerical expression. Um, an algebraic expression might be 2a plus 3b. These are, this is an algebraic expression. This is a numerical expression, but they're expressions. So let's talk about terms then. A term in an expression is each individual, uh, I should say, uh, unit or part of the expression separated by operations. So in this expression here, there are two terms. In this expression here, there are two terms. Okay. So what are like terms? Well like terms are terms that can be combined. So 2 and 3 are like terms because I can combine them to 5. 2a and 3b are not like terms because I can't combine 2a and 3b to become 5ab. That's not how it works and later we'll explain how that works or why that doesn't work. The word simplify the term simplify is just a fancy way of saying combined. So this expression has been simplified to 5. Okay. An equation is not an expression. So expressions and equations are similar, but um, they have some differences. So this right here on the right, we'll talk about the, this expression on the right. It's, it is an expression, but I can make it an equation by adding one thing to it. Now that I have two sides separated by an equal sign, this has become an equation. And equations uh, oftentimes will be solvable, meaning you can find the correct solution for A and B. In this case, I don't have enough information to solve for A and B, uh, but uh, an equation that you might be able to solve might be something like this. This is an equation. Coefficients. Okay, so a coefficient right here is a number that's connected to a variable. So in this term, the coefficient is 2. Okay. In the term 2y, the variable, the variable, is y. So um, the variable is the unknown, the coefficient is the number attached to the variable. There is always, and I'll maybe I'll just say this one more last thing, it's getting a little messy here, so I'm going to clear the board. Uh, a coefficient, if I gave you like a term a, there is a coefficient here that we don't normally write. That coefficient would be one. So a lot of vocabulary words to go over, but uh, hopefully you guys got that. Oops. Okay, algebra is everywhere. Um, we use algebra all the time, so we're going to be combining like terms all the time. In examples like basketball, driving, or filming, or music, you, you're dealing with groups of numbers that happen over and over again and you can attach them to, to variables. I'm not going to spend too much time on this activity. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I do want to look at this. So you have, we're going to call these terms here. This is a, a term, a term, a term, and a term. You have four terms here. Within these terms, how many smiley faces and stars are there? The big mistake that students make when they're combining like terms is they will say, 
Oh, look, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There are 21 smiley faces. Is that true? What's wrong with that statement? I think you, you've discovered or you've realized that, no, there, when, we, when we're adding items together, it really only makes sense to add the items together that are alike. So how many smiley faces do I have here? Well, if there's uh, there's eight smiley faces in this term and there's three smiley faces in this term, it's safe to say that I actually have 11 smiley faces. Right. I have 11 of those smiley faces. And then if I'm looking at this term right here, that looks like nine stars and that looks like one star. So I could say this is nine stars and that is one star and so it looks like I actually have ten stars total. So it wouldn't make sense to combine these two because how would you do it? Would you say I have eleven, I have twenty-one smiley faces, I have twenty-one stars, I have twenty-one smiley face stars? Well it's not really smiley face stars, they're separate. So these four terms, two of them can be combined because two of them are alike. And these two can be combined because these two are alike. That's important to understand. So when we're writing these, the coefficient would be, in this term, eight and then smiley faces. Eight smiley faces. The coefficient in this term would be nine stars. The coefficient in this term would be three smiley faces. And then the coefficient in this term would be 1. And we're looking at 1 star here. So we would say 8 smiley faces plus 9 stars plus 3 smiley faces plus a star is equal to 10 or 11 smiley faces and 10 stars. This is one way to think about combining like terms. Okay, so let's talk about variables. In, in mathematics, in an algebraic expression, you're going to be dealing with uh, terms that have both variables and, and not variables. So here's the question. How do you combine like terms? Well, you're first going to identify the like terms. Notice how I've marked the m's in red because any term that has an m next to it is classified as a like term with the other M terms. And in green, I marked the numbers, the terms that are just numbers without a variable. So 5 and negative 3 are like terms because they don't have M's next to them. Then what you're going to do is you're going to group those like terms. So I'll show you what I mean here. So I just took the 5M and the negative 7M and I put them together. Notice how I kept the negative with that 7m. I took the 5 and the negative 3 and I put those together as well. Then, what do you do? Well, now you can combine those like terms. And so, what I have is 5m minus 7m is negative 2m. And then 5 minus 3 is 2. And so I can say that my final answer is negative 2 plus m. So this is the simplified expression. I have just simplified the expression by combining like terms. So how does this work? What, how, why does 5m minus 7m equal negative 2m? Well, it's because there are 5 positive m's and 7 negative m's. And you can, you can see that uh, right here. Okay. So I put this in, a, in an algebra block, and uh, well, let's just look at what happens. Okay. Notice that when we combine positives and negatives, like, like terms, the five positive m's and the five negative m's are going to cancel each other out using the additive inverse property. So in in weeks past, you've learned that 3 plus a negative 3 equals 0 because you have 3 positives and 3 negatives and 
a, a positive and a negative are additive inverses of each other. Uh, they're zero pairs. And so a zero pair will always cancel each other out. Well, when you're adding negative 7 and a positive 5, you got 5 positives and 5 negatives that will create groups of zero pairs. That's a zero, that's zero, 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 and zero, zero. So those will all just go away. Okay. And that leaves me with just two negative m's. So this is why 5m minus 7m is equal to negative 2m. Okay, so every time you combine like terms, this is how you should think of it. All right. There is a, a little bit of a scariness when it comes to combining like terms where the coefficients are fractions or decimals, meaning rational numbers. So look at the example, negative 5 sixths t plus 1 third t. Well, fortunately, we have a calculator, but unfortunately, our calculator doesn't combine like terms. So if you were to type in t into your calculator, it's probably just going to give you something like zero. It's not going to know what to do. But each term has a common factor. So really, if you want to think about it, you can still do this in your calculator. You just think to yourself, okay, since they're both t's, I can just combine them. And forget about the t for a second. What is negative 5 sixths plus 1 third? Do that in your calculator and tell me what you get. Right? You've got a negative 3 sixths, or it should reduce down to a negative 1 half. So now that you know that uh, that is equal to negative 1 half, and you know that both terms had a t on it, all you do is attach the t back to it. So you can do the math, the calculations in your calculator if, you're, if you struggle with fractions, but you have to be smart enough to know that those two terms both had t's next to it, and so your final answer should have a t on it as well. Now time for you to try some on your own, so go ahead and try this. Okay, so g and 2g are like terms, so I can combine those. That equals 3g. And then 2, positive 2, is not like terms with the, with the g family, and so I just bring this down. So I have simplified this expression to 3g plus 2. Okay. Go ahead and do number 2 now. Okay, so the like terms I see are t and negative 3t, 3 and 2. So I can see this as, uh, well, let's see, what's t minus 3t? That's going to be negative 2t. And then what's 3 and 2? That's going to be a positive 5. So my simplified expression is negative 2t plus 5. Go ahead and try number three out. Yeah, this one is tricky. I have an H here, but are there any other H's? No. I have a negative four here, but are there any other terms without a variable? Nope. I have a, a seven T here, but there's no other T. And then I have a W here, negative two W actually. And, and well, there's no there's no w. So my simplified expression is h minus 4 plus 7t minus 2w. I can't combine any of those terms because none of those terms are like each other. Okay, go ahead and try number 4. All right, uh, h minus 4 minus 5h. So I've, I've got a, I've got a h here and a negative 5h. I can combine those to get, uh, let's see, that's a positive, positive h, and five negative h's, so one positive h will cancel out one negative h, leaving me with four negative h's left over. And then that negative four here is still just there with nothing to combine with. 
last one. Go ahead and combine these two. Okay, so I've got a negative 5 here, and I've got a negative 4. Those are like terms. I've also got a negative h. Oh, and another negative h. Okay, so let's, um, let's see this first. So a negative 5 combined with a negative 4. There's no canceling out because they're both negatives, and so that really just leaves me with negative 9. Then I've got uh, a negative h and a negative h. Again, there's no zero pairs because they're both negative, so that just leaves me with negative 2h. Okay. Hope this is helpful.